Everybody starts somewhere, and when you're getting your first reptile, there's some great options. But these five reptiles are ones you should never get as a beginner. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wicked Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. I'm not really gonna say you should never ever get these, okay? I mean, in general, most beginners should not get these reptiles, and I'll explain why for each one, because they're all different. Of course, if you have your heart set on them, I don't think you should get a corn snake and a ball python and a bearded dragon first so you can eventually get what you actually want. There are, except we'll go through it. Okay, let's just start off number five, Maclats pythons. So the newest python species that I own, I've got one, a baby, he's very cantankerous, and this is part of the reason. Maclats pythons can tame out and be beautiful. Look at this one here. I mean, this thing didn't hiss at me, didn't huff puff, didn't try to strike at me, nothing but it took effort to get this snake this way. This is Annalise at All Canadian Reptile Girl. She did an amazing job with this Maclats Python, but it doesn't mean just because she did that you're gonna be able to or even want to put in the time because most people who are beginners want a snake that out of the box is ready to go. And a Maclats Python is not that. Beginners often get scared off by snakes that are bitey or flighty. Most Maclats Python's babies are not the friendliest things in the world. So that's why I think it's not really a great idea for most people to get them. They're just not the best pets for most people. Also, they get really big. So if you get a ball python, for example, most people have eight square feet of space for an enclosure that doesn't need that much height, right? You can stick it on your dresser and it only adds two feet of height, something like that. Some people uh, want something bigger but aren't willing to give them the space. Maclats pythons, being that they can get seven, eight, nine, ten feet, really, really big ones, by the way, you need an arboreal enclosure, first of all. You need it to be long. You need a, a huge space for one of these pythons. They are even... I don't know, the close to a super dwarf reticulated python, I think, which maybe we'll talk about soon. But I think that they need a similar type environment if you're setting them up properly. It's a semi-arboreal snake from places like Indonesia and the surrounding area that gets, you know, seven, eight feet, maybe more. So you need a lot more space. And then to add the heat and humidity to a bigger space is more difficult and there's a learning curve to it. And then you're feeding bigger prey items, which scare a lot of people who are beginners. So for those reasons, I mean, in general, it's not really a size thing as much as size plus enclosure plus how they're cantankerous and take a while to tame out. Number four, red ear sliders. We don't talk too much about turtles on this channel, but red ear sliders, if you've seen a turtle, this is probably the one, okay? Everywhere I've been in the world, there's invasive red ear sliders. They're not supposed to be in Asia, but I've seen them there, okay? I've seen them being chomped on by monitor lizards in Lumpini Park. They're everywhere. So I think because they get bigger than most people think. We're talking some of them can get 10 or 13 inches if like really big females. Most people will buy, you know, a cute little baby red ear slider at a expo or reptile shop or flea market or whatever and buy them a tiny little tank. They don't give them any land area, which they need. Don't give them UVB. Don't even know what that is most of the time, which they need. Don't give them a basking spot, which they need. Don't give them proper filtration, which they need because they produce so much poop, bro. So much poop so much poop so you need all of these things this is expensive and you need 75 100 gallons of water depending on if it's a male or a female 150 gallons if you want to add fish and a second turtle so most people aren't going to do that especially if you're a beginner to say hey i'm getting a new animal my first reptile ever i'm just going to get a six foot aquarium like most people don't do that and then because they outgrow the enclosures that they buy for them and they don't want to put in the effort or money to get something they actually need, instead what they do is they release them into the wild. And we have wild populations, which is terrible, bad. We don't want that to happen. So in my opinion, if you want a turtle, get a musk turtle or something like that that can live in a 40 gallon enclosure if you set it up properly. But red ear sliders, no bueno. Number three, reticulated pythons specifically mainland reticulated pythons, but even super dwarfs I don't think are good for beginners. Now, if you're someone who's been watching lots and lots of videos and you're watching Reach Out Reptiles YouTube channel and other reticulated python channels, and you think, you know what? Maybe I do want a high percentage super dwarf that might only get to six or eight feet if it's a male. That's different. I mean, if you really think you're ready for that and you have the proper enclosure and you're fanatical about that species, but if you're thinking, I wanna get my first snake, Reticulated pythons are not it. 
I mean, they're amazing pets. I have reticulated pythons, super dwarfs, right? So they're small. But if you get, say, a mainland, because you can get mainland reticulated pythons, which might grow 20 plus feet as babies that are gonna be the size of a ball python at the time, and within a year, they're 10 plus feet, right? And you can buy them at expos for 50 bucks. So I understand why people do that. I understand why it happens and they're, you know, ignorant to the fact of what they are, but don't do this, okay? If you want a really cool python, get a ball python. If you want something that's not a ball python, there's Angolan pythons, spotted pythons. There's a lot of really cool pythons and spotted pythons are semi-arboreal snakes that they're really intelligent. I'm not saying they're a replacement for a reticulated python for if that's what you really want, but I'm saying if you want something like a reticulated python, but smaller and easier with less consequences, definitely get a spotted python. I think it's better. Now reticulated pythons are amazing. And this is in my opinion, maybe an expert level snake, even the super dwarfs, because in my experience, and I know the reticulated python people get upset about this. I mean, I'm not trying to crap on them or anything. Burmese pythons and reticulated pythons are often the comparison. Berms, in my experience, are puppy dogs. They're golden retrievers, okay? They're, I just wanna please everybody and be happy and just be super chill. On the other hand, even though golden retrievers are smart, I'm not saying that, I have one, right? Reticulated pythons are German shepherds. They are smart, alert. They don't have as much of a problem biting things before, you know, it's more of a food thing with retics. Retics have crazy food drives. So I'm not painting the, the dogs or the animals in bad light. I'm just saying there's a big difference between the two breeds of dog that maybe you are, can identify with more. And in terms of big snakes, reticulated pythons, they have a very crazy food drive, like crazy. A lot of them, you open up the enclosure and they're biting at whatever it is. Some of them don't have that. Some of them you can crawl in an enclosure with, you're fine. But as a beginner, you don't want to be getting bit by a snake that has really big, really sharp teeth. And that's why I think that reticulated pythons, especially because they're harder to read than a lot of different snakes, they're more unpredictable, unpredictable in my experience than other snakes. I don't think a beginner is a good pet owner for a retic. I don't think retics are best for you. I think if you really want a big snake, you shouldn't get one if you're a beginner, but I think if you are gonna get your first big snake and you don't have a ton of experience reading pythons, I mean, realistically, you shouldn't get one, but in my opinion, berms are better. I was really treading lightly there. I don't want to disparage any of these animals. They're all amazing. I'm just saying for beginners, not so much. There's a golden retriever, by the way, screaming upstairs. Number two, we don't talk about this a lot on the channel, crocodile monitors. Croc monitors are from places of Indonesia, Papua, New Guinea. So really cool monitors in that they're the second biggest in the world next to Komodo dragons. Komodo dragons are a monitor lizard. If you didn't know, they're the biggest. Croc monitors are arguably the second biggest or second longest anyway. These are really big monitors and sure, they're one of the coolest monitors on the planet. If you can't get a Komodo, which you can't, you could get a croc monitor. I mean, they're expensive, but they need tons and tons of space. They are for sure the coolest looking monitor maybe. I think lace monitors, Bell's phase are cooler, but croc monitors have this crazy looking head. They've got wild teeth and jaw pressure and their claws are insane. I think those monkey tail skinks are brutal when I pick them up. Nothing compared to a croc monitor. Croc monitors are the coolest ever, but you need a huge cage, right? Camp Kennan is a great example. He's got a great cage that he built himself outside in the Florida sun. If you don't have those resources and know-how, you shouldn't get one. And in my experience, my opinion, no beginner has the know-how. If you wanna get a monitor as a beginner, I mean, really do your research, obviously, but there's Aki monitors for that. Pilbara rock monitors, if you have a little bit more money and want something unique. If you want a really big monitor and you're just dead set, I'm getting a big monitor, period. I have all the money in the world, blah, 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 blah. I mean, Asian water monitors are a better option. Croc monitors are way more difficult to tame out, way more. I spent some time at the Reptarium and Bruce, their monitor guy, was showing me all the monitors and even just speaking to him for a few minutes, I learned a lot about croc monitors and he did a great job, but this is an expert, Bruce is an expert. You're not if you're a beginner. So croc monitors are definitely not for you. Number one, reptile that you should not get if you're a beginner. I think you're gonna think that I'm gonna say venomous snakes. No, I'm gonna say cobras. I'm really gonna narrow it down, okay? You definitely shouldn't get venomous snakes if you're new, but in my opinion, there are people out there and I know they're out there and I'm advising against it. So I'm saying on camera right now, do not get venomous snakes as your first snake. If you are a beginner, do not get venomous snakes. But there are people out there, oh, the ball guy doesn't know anything. There are better options, okay? 
I don't think that elapids in general, which have toxin in their neurotoxin uh, that's gonna kill you if they bite you, likely, if you don't get to a hospital in time, is a good idea. I don't think that, say, a king cobra, which could be 10 or 12 feet, that can turn around on you faster than you can even blink, is a good idea. I don't think a spitting cobra is a good idea. I don't think a monocle cobra is a good idea. I know that they're out there. I know that you watch Johnny Venom videos and he's got the coolest cobra in the world. He's an expert. You're not. Chandler is an expert. Tyler is an expert. You're not. Don't get a freaking cobra, please. But I know that it's tempting because on some of these Repticon shows, I've seen it out there. They have the red tape around the deli cup and Oh, well, I can go ahead and get myself a whatever rattlesnake, some sort of pit viper for uh, 50 bucks. I'm going to Gaboon Vipers for like a couple hundred bucks. Don't freaking do this. Gaboon Vipers are actually maybe even worse than Cobras. The point is, a Lapids, a lot of them could kill you. A lot of them could kill you. Mambas and Cobras and all this stuff. It's not a good idea. They're not for you. Uh, even if you handle them with a hook, they're faster than you are. You don't know what you're looking for. You don't know how to handle them if they start coming towards you and back you into a corner. You don't know. Don't do it. I don't do it. I've been handling reptiles for 15 plus years. I still wouldn't do it. If you're new to reptiles, stay away from venomous snakes, but especially cobras. And if you do go ahead and get venomous snakes, do the training necessary and required by law in a lot of places with an expert, someone who is qualified, period. I don't think there's anything wrong with owning venomous snakes. If you're an expert, if you have the right facility, if you're doing everything legal above board, have all the precautions. But if you're new, I have a lot of problems with you owning a venomous snake. Anyway, get off my soapbox here, even though it makes me taller, it makes me feel good about myself. Let me know in the comments section below what you think are terrible pets for beginners or what are really good pets for beginners. Let's help out the newbies. And if you're new to the hobby, thank you so much for choosing my channel to watch. There's lots of really cool content just for beginners and novices and things like that. And please hit the like and subscribe if you like videos like this. It really helps the channel more than you could ever know. And Patreon supporters, thank you so much. You guys get videos early, extra videos, discounts on merch, the whole thing. That's it. I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. So that means I'll see you in the next one.